Greetings, everyone. My name is Carla Washington, and I'm pleased to be here presenting online at the Early Childhood Voices Conference on behalf of my colleagues, Corinne Dutenberg, Rachel wright Karam, Cecilia Schwartz, and also Professor Sharon McLeod. We're presenting today on understanding Jamaican children's voices using their drawings. There are no relevant or financial or other conflicts. However, I acknowledge my research engagement support by the National Institutes of Health, and also a training grant from the U.S. Department of Education, which also supports Rachel wright Karam as a doctoral scholar. The research described today was funded in part by an endowment to the Jamaican Creole Language Project and also a University of Cincinnati Vice President for Research Startup Funds. We take a moment to acknowledge our families, the children, the teachers at the schools, and also our ethics boards for making possible this research. I'd like to begin by talking about multilingualism and practice. In many contexts, the number of multilingual language users is increasing. But what does it mean to be multilingual? The International Expert Panel on Multilingual Children's Speech has offered us a definition that is broad and inclusive because it reflects the children we see in our clinics and our classrooms. So, people who are multilingual are able to comprehend and or produce two or more languages in oral, manual, or written form with at least a basic level of functional proficiency or use regardless of the age at which the languages were learned. Now, more than half of the world's population meets that definition, with the majority of children speaking more than one language. In contexts such as Northern Europe, in Finland, for example, 75% of people speak two languages, with 25% of the population in Finland speaking four or more on a daily basis. In the United States, multilingualism is realized at about 20%, so that's about 55 million people. So what does this mean? It means that multilingualism is the norm and not the exception. However, in the United States also, only 6.5% of speech pathologists with American Speech Language Hearing Association identify themselves as bilingual service providers. So for speech pathologists, what does this mean? It means there is a linguistic and cultural mismatch between our clientele and us as professionals. So we need to employ new and creative ways of understanding the communicative experiences of the children we serve. And drawings, or children's drawings, I should say, help us to do this. Traditionally, a child's view has been sometimes supplementary to that of the adults. So we collect information from children and we collect information from their parents and their teachers and their care providers to understand children's speech and language development. But recent evidence has shown that drawings provide an ecologically valid way for understanding the communicative experiences of children who are typically developing, those who are disordered, and in both of those contexts, children who are linguistically diverse, for example, Spanish-English speakers. Now, growing awareness of the rights of the child has resulted in children being engaged as experts in their own lives. And drawings actually engage children as experts and provide them in a, voice, a voice in matters that concern them. So a child can draw a picture, and then from that picture, we can understand, are they happy when they're speaking? Who are the people they speak to? And how do they feel about the way that they speak? The idea of engaging the child as experts and hearing their voices is in fact manifested in the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child in Article 12, which discusses the right of the child to be heard. This means we're to place as few restrictions as possible on children's participation. So including children's voices in matters that involve their interest is an important premise in modern society that says that a child is capable of forming his or her own views. And using drawings make children active participants in matters that concern them and also adheres to Article 12 of the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child. This concept is also further illustrated in the World Health Organization's International Classification on Functioning Disability and Health, where we can consider 
environmental factors such as for example a child from Jamaica who is now living in the United States speaking both Jamaican Creole and English with the personal factor being that the child uses English and Jamaican Creole on a daily basis. So how does this impact on the child's participation or involvement in daily life activities? Across the world, this framework has been adopted by speech pathology associations in Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States and makes us as speech language pathologists responsive to understanding the child's communicative experience from their own perspective. So I think here about the Jamaican context once again. So the child who is from Jamaica would have used English in formal settings such as schools and in Jamaica English is actually used in both spoken and written forms. Now, Jamaican Creole is a Creole language that originally formed from West African languages and English as a result of contact due to slavery. But now, Jamaican Creole stands independent of both of its heritage languages. Jamaican Creole is considered to be an oral language and is commonly used with friends, a family, or in situations that are perceived as being more informal. In the United States, Jamaican-born individuals actually represent the third largest Caribbean-born group behind Cuba and the Dominican Republic where Spanish is spoken. But the Jamaican Creole and English language pairing, which is increasingly commonly used outside of Jamaica in migrant countries such as the United States, Canada, and the UK, is more understudied in the speech and language literature. But if we think about the illustration on the right here, we see that when we think about English present tense, we might hear, I eat. But Jamaican Creole present tense would say, Minyam, where Nyam represents a lexical change for eat. So there are differences between these two languages. Now, with the growth in this linguistic populace in the United States and around the world, it increases the possibility of speech pathologists being exposed to children speaking Jamaican Creole and English. And we want to ensure that they are well informed about these children's communicative experiences. So we sought to characterize bilingual Jamaican Creole and English speaking preschoolers talking experiences using their drawings. Most of the research conducted to date has not considered understudy linguistic pairings such as a Creole language and its lexifier, but we want to bridge that gap in knowledge to help the speech pathologists understand bilingualism more broadly. So we sought to answer two specific aims, or I should say address two specific aims. First, to describe how Jamaican children portray their talking by examining themes, such as talking to friends and family, or focal points, such as colors used. Then we also sought to examine children's feelings about their talking by examining their ratings. And we did this for both of their spoken languages. To address our specific aims, we enrolled 23 typically developing four to six year olds, 12 males, 12 females and 11 males, all recruited from schools in Kingston, Jamaica. The characterization of typical development included their oral language use for both of their spoken languages, normal IQ, oral motor functioning, and no concerns about development or other areas, and also passed a binaural hearing screening. So children, were engaged in tasks with language specific clinicians in order to complete the drawing task. Children were asked to draw themselves talking to each other, to another person in each of their languages. So for example, in Jamaican Creole, the child was asked, me want you draw one picture for me. Me can't keep you when you're done? Draw yourself a talk to somebody else. They were then handed a blank piece of paper and they were provided with multicolored felt tip markers, which they were free to choose from to engage in the drawing task, which was timed for about seven minutes, five to seven minutes. And here you can see what the child drew in Creole and below, and this was a five year old boy, you can see what he drew in English. Once the child finished drawing, they responded to questions about their drawing. So who was in the drawing and it was me and my friend. How do you know them? They're my friend. Do you like them? Yes. You like talking to them? 
and where are you, we're at school, and what are we talking about, and I feel happy about the way that I speak. Children also responded to prompts in Jamaican Creole and in English to answer questions about their talking experiences in context. To do this, we use the speech participation and activity assessment measure by Sharon McLeod. And this measure was completed to provide additional experience, additional information about Jamaican children's talking experiences. Children responded to questions about their talking experiences using a visual Likert scale, happy, in the middle, sad, another feeling, or don't know. Using the speech participation and activity assessment, people are encouraged to use the questions to increase their understanding of the individual child and the context in which they live. And it is intended to embrace the categories of the International Classification of Functioning, Disability and Health, so it does consider those contextual factors. So for example, in, in, in Creole, the question, how you feel about the way, how you feel when you play with the picnic them at school? Or how do you feel about the way you play with the children at school? In both of their languages, the child felt happy. Once we collected the data, analysis began. Drawings were analyzed using a meaning-making approach for three themes listed on the left that were previously identified by Holiday et al capturing expressions, feelings, and experiences about talking. Using the focal points approach, we identified the focal points, and these were also previously identified by Holiday et al. They were used to capture hidden meanings based on relationships depicted. It also considers the closeness and positivity and vitality depicted in the drawings. There were seven focal points on listed here on the right. Trained speech language pathology students independently analyzed and coded each of the drawings for the three themes and the seven focal points. Important to note is that each drawing could be coded for multiple themes and focal points. Once these themes and focal points were identified, inter-rater reliability was established using Kappa statistics. Now responses to the SPASI were analyzed based on the visual Likert scale and our analysis focused on the first eight questions as has been recommended by McLeod et al. What did we find? Our data showed that preschoolers were able to express their feelings about their talking experiences for each of their languages using their drawings. So for Jamaican Creole, we found that the children were able to, the most frequently coded themes were talking or listening and also expressing themselves as being happy. For English, we found that the most frequently coded theme was actually children enjoying themselves talking to family and friends. So let's remind ourselves what this looks like. So here we have the drawing in in response to the Creole prompt where you see the smiles, they're happy and they're talking to a friend. And then also in English, we observe the exact same thing. Now for the focal points. We illustrated here from most to least frequently coded. For both spoken languages, the most frequently coded focal point was conversational partner at 96%. And the least frequently coded focal point was negativity evidenced here at 13%. Preschoolers were able to express their feelings in response to prompts in Jamaican Creole, and they showed that they were generally happy across their different conversational partners and in those different contexts in Jamaican Creole. The same thing was also found for English. They're happy when they're speaking to different people, generally speaking, and in different experiences when they're speaking. Using drawings and questions about the context surrounding talking experiences do promote preschoolers active involvement in matters that concern them. And our data from the spa see the themes and the focal points showed us that Jamaican children can in fact be engaged to express their thoughts and their feelings.
And what did we learn? That they're actually very happy about the way that they're speaking in both of their languages. Confucius said that true wisdom is knowing what we don't know. And as speech language pathologists, we genuinely care about helping young children and are working hard to ensure that they have positive experiences. We acknowledge the mismatch between the linguistic diversity of our clientele and more of the monolingual English speaking or majority language nature of the clinician. But by using drawings and the spa C, and so answering questions about the way you feel, a monolingual speech pathologist can understand a bilingual child's views and culture. Because this is an alternate way of working, working with children who speak more than one language on a daily basis. Ultimately, the speech language pathologist's cultural competence is supported. Thank you so much.